that, can I? It's a um, great time of the year. Um, Palm Sunday is one of those, you know, we, we've got Easter and Christmas and things like that, but Palm Sunday is sort of a lesser celebration, isn't it? You know, it's not, I should have a palm to wave around so that um, I stole yours. No, these are mine over here. Just don't pinch each other's palms. Um, yeah, Palm, Palm Sunday is a, it's a celebration. It comes every year, um, but I think, I think it's underrated somewhat. So I'm going to, this is my, my attempt today in this message is to, um, is to sell Palm Sunday to you, right? To, to increase the profile of Palm Sunday in the life of the everyday Christian. Uh, let's, let's try and do that. Because it's always good to have another celebration. Actually, that poor old palm's getting a bit tired. These are good ones. I need a bigger one. But um, probably don't need a bigger one. That's the cry of the Western world, isn't it? I need a bigger one. I need a better one. But um, you like that one? Oh, look at that one. <sighs> look at that. Oh, now, now I'm over empalmed. Um, you know, when I went to Sunday school, um, I heard about Palm Sunday and and the uh, Jesus triumphal entry into Jerusalem is the is the correct title of of what we're talking about today. And you know, you've got the picture, haven't you, of of Jesus coming into Jerusalem on that day, and he jumps on a donkey and and he comes, and then all of these people go, oh, here comes Jesus. Let's get a palm branch off a tree and put it in front of him to make a bit of a road um, because we really think Jesus is cool. And so they put that down. When they ran out of palm branches, they started taking their coats off and laying them down. Right. After examining that a little more closely, it's not quite as simple as that. Um, you know, it's, it's not like a sudden thing, you know, that, People are just sort of standing around doing nothing. And, oh, here comes Jesus. Actually, I think Jesus is grossly underrated. And I think that while he is riding a donkey, I think he needs a better entrance that he's experiencing right now. And so they chuck palm branches down. That's not how it happened. There was, there's a bit of a lead up. We've got to set the scene um, as to the environment into which Jesus was coming. So it, it wasn't just accidental. It was, it was, it was pre-thought. It was Jesus, um, Jesus was saying something very specific by his entry and the way he did it. He was also saying something very specific by the time he went there. This was a planned event. Jesus... Um, Jesus was jumping on the back of something that had been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. And he was saying something more than just what Hosanna to the son of David would be said. Let me, let me back up a bit. Um, in the readings that we, that we look at today, there's, it talks about the um, triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But we've got to look at what the people were saying. They were saying, Hosanna to the son of David, right? We're all saying Hosanna. Why were they saying that? Well, it was a, it was a particular time of the year. We know it's just before Easter, which Jesus didn't invent. Um, that was the Passover. Right, So Jesus just completed it. He didn't start a new festival. He completed an existing one. So at the Passover, that was the big one for the Jews because it celebrated their escape from slavery into Egypt. So we've got to go back thousands of years to, to the uh, captivity in Egypt first. And so there's this escape from Egypt. There's the going through the Red Sea where the water was parted and, uh, and through the desert into the promised land. So it's, it's all of that. Rescue, 
and gift of a promised land. So celebrating all of that and in that, that's what the Passover gathers together. So when you do the Passover, you remember all of this. So, um, and so after all of this time, what they've gone and done is developed an order of worship like we do today. You know, we have an order of worship. We're going to sing a couple of songs. We're going to have Bible reading. And, and that's the pattern that we're going to worship. And so we write stuff down. We plan stuff. So this is how we worship. Well, that's exactly what they did back then. And they put something together as to what people would do at this festival. So they've got this festival. Before the Passover, there's this festival that happens. And people um, go into Jerusalem. They gather in Jerusalem. And be before the Passover, they gather in Jerusalem and they go to the temple. And the temple gates are swung open. And for this one time of the year, the inner gates are opened and people are allowed to go into the temple courts. Any other time, it's only the priests, right? But this time of the year, one time of the year, the gates open and they're allowed to go into the temple courts and actually go around the altar. Like that's, that's the real holy place. So they're allowed to go around the altar. What they do is they take palm branches into the temple and they take these palm branches and they go around the altar and they hit the altar with the palm branches and on the last day of the celebration so it goes for a whole week on the last day they go around seven times around the altar and and hit the horns of the altar so there's horns out and you know you can imagine probably the young blokes you get a bit of street cred if you can smash your palm branch to bits on the altar right, with this mangled palm branch and leave some of your palm in there, right? That's a bit of a bit of an added bonus. And so they carry these palm branches. So now, while they're doing that, I want to read to you the service order for the day, or we've come to know it as Psalm 118. I'm not going to read it all. But from verse 19, it says, Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. You might recognize that from Indiana Jones in the um, Last Crusade. Uh, through which the... Sorry about that. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Listen, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Um, Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. By the way, that phrase, if you search it in your Bible, it, it only comes up here and in the New Testament where they're quoting this. So it's a one-off. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord to this. It's, it's only for this celebration, that phrase. From the house of the Lord we bless you. Now, the story then develops Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's when Messiah will come. Because it says here, open, me, open for me the gates of the righteous. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. So this is when the righteous one is going to come. Right? This, this began to be taken then as a prophecy of the Messiah, one of the many. Right, so... So you had this idea, this idea grew, not just from this, but this idea grew among the people that there was going to be a Messiah coming, right? How would we recognize him? Well, he would come at a certain time of the year and he would come to rescue us. And 
he's going to come at, at this time, uh, at this festival. Oh, how will he come, O oh great teacher? Well, it says in the scriptures, um, in uh, Zechariah 9 verse 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So this is way back then, this prophet writes this, that your saviour will come. And you'll, you'll recognise him because he'll come victorious but humble. Now, everybody knew that riding on a donkey meant something. Right? Kings would ride donkeys. They would also ride horses. They would ride horses into battle as a sign of aggression. They would ride donkeys when they come in peace. Okay, so this was already a symbol. This was already a thing that kings did. So, you've got this, these patterns building, these expectations building in the lives of people. That when they see this happen, you will know that. Right? When you, you know, when you see the storm clouds build, you know, to park your car out under the carport. There are, there are things that you can see happening that you know mean certain things. So you've got this expectation. Now, we haven't heard anything from the prophets for 450 years at this time, at the time Jesus came, and things are getting pretty bad. So expectation is building even more that the Messiah will come because the Romans have come and, they, and we need someone to boot them out. Right? We are under oppression and so we need saving. And so the request for the Messiah was growing, but also the expectation. You know, just like lots of people thought it was, you know, that, that we're going to see the end coming soon because of COVID. You know, we're going to see the end coming soon because of certain things that are happening in this world. Um, you know, difficulties and, and disasters that befall us grow in us an expectation that there's something coming. Well, this was happening then as well. It's the expectation of the people. You've got them not just randomly on the road and not just racing off to pick some branches off a tree. You've got them very purposefully walking along the road with their palm branches going to the festival. Right, So the people and the palm branches are already there. Now, these people, families... It doesn't take much imagination to start building this picture. You've got these families with the palm branches on the road and you've got, um, you know, mum and dad turning to the kids saying, look, when we get to the temple, behave yourselves, right? <laughs> well, that's, that's us. But uh, that's, that's with our kids. You know, don't climb trees. Um, you know, try and stay in your seats. But there would be other instructions too, wouldn't, it? wouldn't there? But when we get there, we're going to be singing this psalm. Now, we haven't got a hymn book for you to read this out of, so we'll practice it on the way, shall we? Okay, this is how you sing it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So it's quite conceivable to think that you've got a line of people all down this hill, along this road, leading into Jerusalem, all carrying palm branches, singing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And there's this legend going around that the Messiah will come when we sing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then a few people turn around and they see this guy riding a donkey. Why is he riding a donkey? He very purposefully wanted to ride a donkey. It's not the only way he could have gotten to Jerusalem. He's been to Jerusalem before, not that long ago. But he says to his disciples, Go into town and get the donkey. You will find a donkey there and a colt, the foal of a donkey. I want you to bring them to me. And when the guy says, hey, what are you doing with my donkey? 
tell him the Lord needs it. And he will say, okay. So that's what they do. They go there. Oh, donkey, I bet I'm tired. Sorry, I seem to be stealing your donkey. Guy comes along, what are you doing with my donkey? And they say, the Lord had, has needs of it. And he says, okay. Okay. All right. I'll bring it back, honest. And anyway, so they line Jesus up and on he gets and rides in. So all these people turn with these expectations building. They see a guy. Look at that. It's happening. Well, they said the Messiah would come riding on a donkey. I know it could be just some dude riding a donkey. But it's Jesus. As he gets closer, they recognize him. It's Jesus. What are they thinking now? Some guy says, hey, yeah, that's, the, that's him. That's the Messiah. That's the one I've been telling you about. That's the guy that's been healing people. That's the guy that's been sticking it to the Pharisees about their, you know, lording it over people and not doing God's will. That's the guy that, that I saw, um, you know, speaking to the widow. And uh, didn't he raise that kid from the dead? Didn't, you know... Oh, all of these stories start to spread along the line. People, it's him. They start singing a bit louder and then somebody starts with this, you need a better road than this gravel. And the act of worship begins. Jesus comes. Now this is the important bit. He steps into this expectation, fulfills the expectation. What's he saying? Not here I come to preach to you, not here I come to save you even, but here I come as your king. He's declaring himself king. I've heard other scholars actually say that, uh, that there's another entrance into Jerusalem and at that time of the year, the, uh, the Romans would do a bit of a procession in to, to quell any uh, disturbance. And so Jesus was displaying himself as an alternate king to the Romans, um, which was an extra, you know, little... Ta-da. Um, but anyway, I, I haven't been able to find evidence of my own of that, but it's just a nice story at this stage. Um, but it would have been, however you look at it and whatever else was going on, just him riding in on his own and accepting the praise of people. Remember, he was told to shut the people up. He said, no, nah, even the stones would cry out if, if these people stopped. Um, what he was saying was, I'm him. I'm the Messiah. I've come not as your not not only as your teacher, not only as your healer, not only as your saviour, but I've come as your Lord and your King. And as people sang Hosanna, they coronated him King. His final coronation, of course, the crown of thorns, the humble and sacrificial coronation as King. Palm Sunday is that day that we remember the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We remember Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem, declaring himself to be king and being declared as king by the people. Um, yes, at the end of this week, uh, we'll be talking about, um, you know, just how that happened. We'll be talking about the salvation right now. We celebrate him as the king. That's why Palm Sunday is important for us. See, often we think of Jesus as our saviour. Um, you know, we pray to God that we would be helped and all that kind of thing. But let's declare him king. 
Let's declare him Lord of our lives because that's where he belongs. Uh, that, that way a lot of this other stuff makes sense. You know, why prayer takes so long and why God doesn't just heal people we ask for, you know, and all of that kind of thing. It, it brings all of that into focus because God is saying, no, I'm, I'm here to proclaim the kingdom and your, your role, your job as the church is to proclaim the kingdom. Sort of fits together. That's what. I, that's where I want to see us growing. As and Rob mentioned it too in in the um, you know the kingdom thing. As we uh, as we come across people in our daily lives, our role is yes to introduce them to Jesus, but to to help them see Jesus as. Lord and King of their lives who, who who does want them to be a part of his kingdom um, that that's the that's the thing that's the the message of Palm Sunday is that uh, we're, there is a kingdom that we can move into there is a kingdom that you know God wants to take over our lives it's not what's the picture? not just inviting God into our lives to make our lives better, but to accept the invitation to us into his life that he has for us and declaring him king over our lives and following him. Um, this year, I want to see us thinking more in terms of the kingdom rather than our church. And the church is wonderful. Love this church. Our church is called to be um, the hope of the world. But I want to see us growing in the sense that our task is to bring the kingdom to bear on our society. And to do that, to do that, I want to challenge every church in the Lockyer Valley to come together to bring the kingdom to bear on the Lockyer Valley. Not just for our church to do our thing a little bit better. No. Let's, let's grow as God's people. One church in the valley declaring the kingdom for the valley. So, so watch this space. My call is for every church in the valley to come together and to, uh, to work together to have one goal, to bring the kingdom. Let's bring the kingdom. That's, uh, does Palm Sunday sound a bit more exciting to you now? That's the message of Palm Sunday. That's the message of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And just a little word on remembering. In remembering this, we actually do it again. We don't, it's just not just a cerebral thing. Oh, I recall that to my to the front of my brain. So now that now that I know it, right? No, remembering is reliving it, redoing it, re-experiencing a real thing. So Jesus entering into Jerusalem, de being declared and declaring himself king, is as real today as it was back then. So let us all lay down our palms, however that looks. And actually, I just had the picture of your palms. <laughs> lay down our palms. When you lay down your palms, you bow, you've got to bow low to do that. Let's lay down our palms and declare him king today, just as they did back then. Because he is the king of our lives. And now we want to declare him king over the valley. May God's peace be with you as you rejoice in your King because he calls us to serve him. Amen.